Hi guys, what's up? I am up. It's 2 a.m. in the night and I'm teaching you this. In this lesson, we'll be talking about basic approach to polity. And this will be the single most important lesson you'll ever see in your life. If you understand the concept which I teach here, you will score 90% marks in prelims and almost highest marks in mains. This is presented by me, Roman Seni. And if you feel like these courses are helping in any way, do click on the contribute button, sir and ma'am. And you can also follow me on an academy on an academy dot and slash user slash Roman Sani. Why am I teaching you polity? Main hota kaun hu aapko polity badhane wala. See, I got a decent score in uh, prelims as well as in mains. It is one of my favorite subject. Literally speaking, I'm really, really strong in this. Plus, I have mugged up the facts. And I have understood most of the concepts. Not all, obviously. It's humanly impossible. And most importantly, I really like to study the current affairs, politically speaking, political current affairs. I still catch up with the question papers. Most importantly, most of the materials, teachers, videos, blogs, books, etc. are crap and will not help you. They are distracting you. So the strategy which I am telling you is a filtered out version of what really, really works. And it will work for 90 to 95% of you. That's 100% guaranteed, but for really, really novice and beginner people and for really expert, it will not work. So not meant for exception on either side. Now let's analyze the paper. In prelims, as you can see, this is the trend. Approximate number is roughly here, that is 15. So you can see 15 question will always come from this, more or less. 14, 12, 17, 24, 17. More or less 15% of the paper 1 is polity. Out of the 15, 10 to 12 questions are 100% solvable from Lakshmi Kant alone. That means that if you read anything at all, anything at all except Lakshmi Kant, you are literally stupid. Plus, you have to cover basic current affairs, obviously, along with Hindu and Yojana. So, anybody who neglects Lakshmi Kant does at its own peril. I don't know who is the but that will not work. Mains 250 uh, fix is there in GS paper 2. It includes international relations also. You have to read something else for that. Polity will also help in essay and personal interview. Now, why it should be studied first of all? Okay, as I've already spoken, 15% of the paper comes from it. It helps in both pre-mains and personality interview. It is the most predictable. Most predictable questions come from this. 1979 May, also they used to ask Rajya Sabha question. 2016 also they are asking the same question it is absolutely static so can you see history and polity they don't change and it is the easiest to score area because there is questions are moderate and difficult and there is just a single book available in the market that is Lakshmi Kant dynamic portion is also asked but it is also again asked through static portion I'll show you how and most importantly even when you are in service in civil services polity will help you but art and culture might not okay so that's why you should study it first of all now what is basic strategy you need to be aware of one surrounding what is happening here what is happening in a colony or district or area tehsil country continent region your rights your duties your responsibilities what are the grievance redressal mechanism? How you can go to a post office? How you can approach a BSNL office? What are the duties and accountabilities of others like government departments? How are they accountable to you? NGOs, are they accountable to you? What are their duties? Who are they? So basically basic awareness of surroundings. Now day-to-day -day polity news. Polity news, not political news. Political news are different news. They are talking about person-centric news. Any scandal, these are the kind of political news. Polity related news is like 122nd constitutional amendment bill is being debated. That no confidence motion has been passed. These are polity news, not political news. So you have to filter these out. It will come with practice. Now please don't mug up articles. No need to mug up articles. Just focus on keywords and phrases. If you read Lakshmi Khan 4 or 5 times, all the important points will stick in your head. And one should read polity even if you are not an UPSC aspirant. Gen just a general citizen if they start reading, our country will become developed in the next 20 years. Beware of similar looking options. That is what, ha what they, how they trap you in MCQs, but that is for next videos. And whatever is in news, the static portion of that topic becomes important. I will show you how. Now, how to analyze polity? How to approach a topic? First of all, you have to read the facts. Just skim through it. Skim means go very, very fast. Then read the corresponding constitutional clause or article if applicable. For example, if you are reading with right of life, then you have to go to constitution. You see what is article 21, what is its exact text, exact text, exact text. Then highlight four to five keywords from it. Then understand causes and effect. Why did that happen? Why was that committee, Verma committee was there? 
okay because of nirbhaya case and what were the effect of that committee did any change substantial change came why the age of consent was increased from 16 to 18 why did that happen what was the effect what is prevention of children sexual harassment act what is poxo so all these things are interrelated you have to understand cause and effects they are all there is no silos everything is interdependent then you have to understand exceptions if any for example usually parliament cannot make laws on state list except in five conditions for example international treaty of rajya sabha request all india services all that you know right you have to remember time period if rajya sabha can give it in 14 days money bill what type of majority will be there what is the process what is the exception what is the sequence of process for example if state name is to be changed president has to introduce it then it will go there then it will go there then it will go there all the five sequence then state center who is responsible if there is any difference between their powers at particular thing that who is the ultimate authority in that particular case then my funda fundamental advice is mug up everything up to part 4a article 1 to 51a should be on tips because many many questions are asked from this then panchayati raj institutions and emergency these are the three most important regions of polity then for example how questions are asked can president's rule be imposed in a state even without the governor's recommendation slash report to the president is it possible most people mark it no but if the that, that is the exact text of article 356 that if the president on receipt of report from governor of state or otherwise so that's how it is written it is very very small but in your mind it should be registered like this this is the keyword this is the keyword here in your mind the note should be like that this is the keyword again can you see make it big make it really huge so you know that even otherwise even otherwise if such words are coming you have to make sure you remember them that's how your approach should be exceptions 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 question come from exceptions always remember that now for example how the static portion comes uh dynamic portion through static portion like apmc act was in news in 2015 okay so the question was in india markets and agriculture products are regulated under so answer is apmc act right so this is simple then again syrian crisis were there so they asked the question on golan heights which is a syrian territory occupied by israel according to syria it is illegally occupied so it has to be in the middle east region obviously and then can you see these things they are very very interrelated things if you syrian crisis there you should know their map 2014 everybody know collegian system was under question judicial accountability uh, commission uh, 121st amendment act what not was there that is why they asked power to increase the number of judges in supreme court of india is vested in who answer is parliament that's how they ask these questions then again power of the supreme court of india to decide disputes in the center and state falls under its original jurisdiction so can you see this just judiciary is in news so that's why they ask these two questions so you have to remember what is in news for example in 2013 planning was there right 2012 uh, your plan came new five year plan so planning was all everywhere this year the, that is the year i gave the exam so we used to study 2012 planning 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 everything about planning faster more sustainable growth every these all these questions came okay so which of the following bodies does not find mention in the constitution everything is related to planning three questions came this is again related to planning this is absolutely related to planning so as you can see lots of questions come from the uh, news items but they are not dynamic in nature they are static so for example 2012 you remember 3g scam coal scam commonwealth scam all those scam so control audit journal was in news so very good questions was asked answer of this is c but i will be talking about all the previous year question papers anyway so you don't need to worry so finally points to ponder is most of the questions are easy to moderate if you know how to approach it if you have read the material twice you will get it right okay at least twice which means at least revision of four or five times now few of the questions are extremely difficult don't change your strategy based on these some idiots what they want what they start is one or two question came from here and there so they'll start reading ignu notes and ios commission reports arc detail all that bs nothing will come out of it next year because these difficult questions will change every year but static portion easy question will remain the same so please don't boil your blood over them and don't boil my blood also by asking stupid question make logical connections between topics develop your own personal internet in your head and correlate topics as much as you can you will write great answer in mains and always write simple uh, terms when you are making notes in sentences don't use sophisticated legal language so i hope this basic approach will help you let's continue this entire course and you will be a master of polity by the end of this course thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day hey guys what's up 
most of the aspirants who give upsc examination they don't ever read syllabus and that is how downfall starts the top 5% of the aspirant or 1% of the aspirants who are actually serious and motivated enough they are the one who know the syllabus inside out and entire life become easy so i'll be talking about detailed analysis of syllabus in this presented by me roman sani and if you feel sir and ma'am that these courses are helping in any way do click on contribute and you can also follow me on an academy dot in slash user slash roman sani and you can watch all the awesome courses made by me on the website anytime you want 24 7 now why syllabus people ask me why we have to deal with syllabus see you have to learn to differentiate between polity and political there is some political issue you don't give a crap about it nobody is going to ask you in the examination if there is a polity issue for example amendment constitutional amendment bill for example prevention of children from sexual harassment bill for example person with disabilities act for example right to information act if these are coming then they are poly T issues. Some political issues are polity issue as well, but you have to differentiate between these two and syllabus comes into picture then. Those who know this trick, half of your preparation is done and this is my statement, 100% correct. See, approach of an aspirant. How do an aspirant approach polity section? First of all, he has to read or she has to go through the entire syllabus first. That is the mandatory thing. Unfortunately, 99% people don't do that. Second should be going through previous year question paper, realizing what kind of topics are asked, what is important, what is not important, how they ask questions, are they difficult, are they easy, are they moderate, do they repeat question, do they repeat questions on the same topic. So for that pattern analysis, only then you can know what is important and what is not important. Otherwise, you'll keep crying whether this has to be studied or that has to be studied or this has to be ignored or that has to be ignored or this teacher is saying something else, this coaching institute is saying something else, this blog is saying something else. Those of you who have studied previous education paper will never face problem in their life. Syllabus plus previous education papers is everything you need. Then third step is zoning upon books. You decide which books you have to read. Here there is not much choice in polity except Lakshmikant. That is more than enough. Then your study approach which I will be talking about in the next lessons. Then coaching notes, personal notes, how to make these notes. I will be talking about in the next lesson. Then revision strategy. How to revise all these huge information which you have acquired over a period of 1 to 5 years just in let's say 40 to 45 days or 5 days or 1 hour. How to revise that? And then how to practice and repeat, practice and repeat, practice and repeat, practice and repeat, practice and repeat. How to do that again and again and again without getting bored. All this we covered in this course. So let's start with the prelim syllabus. There is absolutely nothing in prelim syllabus. They say that it is Indian polity and governance. Okay. And this, in, this will include constitution. Now, what does constitution mean? It means like its uh, evolution, then how was it made, then what are the important characteristic features, what is preamble, then part one of that Indian Union territory, then part two citizenship, then part three fundamental rights, part four DPSP, part four a fundamental duties. This is basically what this constitution is. Then you can go in part 300s later where you will dealing with amendment of the constitution. Then case one on the Bharti case, what is basic structure of the constitution. Then what is political system? Our political system is parliamentary democracy. So we have like quasi-federal structure. What is quasi? What is federal? How are inter-state relationship? Who takes care of the like dispute if there is if what hot or interstate relationship can center take over through for emergency provisions? So this is basically who is president, who is prime minister, all that. Panchayati Raj is again very, very crucial. Panchayati Raj is like it's an, a different local government altogether, rural governments. So this is very, very important because Gandhi and Vision had it. Public policies, policies on everything from science and technology to health to antibiotics to innovation to skill development, etc., to women empowerment to, to providing reservations to minorities or to providing reservation to backward classes. All this is part of public policy. Rights issues, uh, like I'll be talking about that in detail. I can't explain it now because it will be a bit complicated. But the sixth most important point is this etc. People ignore this etc. That's why I've highlighted it more. This is not the syllabus. This is the syllabus. This is just an indicator. This is like exhaustive portion. So mains is more exhaustive. Mains that paper 3 or general studies paper 2 is completely related to governance, constitution, polity, social justice and international relation. Now social justice is related to vulnerable section and all. Since it is specifically mentioned here, it becomes very, 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 very important. 
all this is covered in prelims also absolutely covered in prelims international relations is not much asked in the prelims except one question here and there now let's see indian constitution as i already spoken historical underpinnings evolution features amendments significant provisions and basic structure i have already spoken a lot on it then functions and responsibilities of the union and union and the states what are the issues what are the challenges of federal structure what is cooperative federalism what is competitive federalism then devolution of powers who devolve the finances who give budget up to local levels and challenges of uh, this this is like the contemporary issues which is facing in indian democracy then separation of powers like montesquieu all this you know right all the philosophers there should be l e g l e j legislative executive judiciary what are the dispute what are the redressal mechanism and other institutions how does it help comparison of indian constitution scheme this is absolutely main topic it will never be asked in prelims for example uk usa and france constitution at least these three you should know now this is very very important because it is asked in pre also mains also interview also essay also everywhere it is asked what are parliamentary privileges parliament and state legislatures are complementary to each other how does it structure what is the function of the parliament see like who is parliamentary forums parliamentary committees cabinet committees council of ministers no confidence motion guillotine ye process resolution uh, money bill ye bill all this is asked how the business is conducted everything is important in parliament then structure and organization of the functioning of the executive executive here means like ministers uh, since president then ministers then your civil servants then judiciary judiciary is again very important supreme courts high court judges appointment the collegium system all this then various ministries and department of the government you should have a brief idea about there are more than 50 central ministries like rough rough number i am telling you i don't know the exact number right now so you go through them and see how many department is there so there is department of aids under ministry of health all that you should know then what are the pressure groups what are the formal and informal associations and their role in the polity you must have seen lokpal bill agitation 3 4 years ago salient features of rps this is now certain topic which are so small and so easy 1950 and 51 you can just make two pages notes and all the questions can be solved from that now appointment to various constitutional post like governor president comptroller auditor general all these are constitutional post because they are found mentioned in the constitution their powers functions and responsibility of various constitutional bodies now what are various constitutional bodies there are lots of constitutional bodies like advocate general of uh, india national commission for scs national commission for sts finance commission upsc spsc election commission linguistic minorities ke liye special officer all these are constitutional bodies and constitutional offices you must be knowing about that that is written in detail in lakshmikan then statutory regulatory in various quasi judicial bodies so that is not that much important for you but still you should have a rough idea now government policies i have already uh, spoken about but why are they not executing that is the important point you should know what are the issues in execution then development of role of the ngos self help groups various groups association donor charities uh, sometime they may ask not that important this is the most important part as i have already spoken social justice find a lot like national commission for scheduled caste national commission for scheduled tribes women bills ye bill women resolution parliament so what what are you doing for vulnerable section disabled person with disability act women scheduled caste scheduled tribes obcs minorities all this you should remember children are also there and how are they performing and what are the mechanism to protect and better these vulnerable sections now issues related to development of social sectors like health education human resources this is like common sense this comes mainly from the or uh, static or dynamic portion issues related to poverty and hunger again now e governance has become very very important how how can you apply it how, how what are the models successes limitations potential like citizen charter is very important transparency and accountability institutional measures this is very important you should focus a lot on this thing role of civil services in democracy in the modern sense and finally international relations this is all contemporary nothing static asked no need to buy a book wherever prime minister goes just follow that what are the memorandum signed all that is remembered basically like g20 all these organization beamstack sarc all these organization where india's interest lies you should remember asean now effect of policies and politics of developed and developed countries on india indian diaspora is very important we have a lot of soft power and finally international institutions unesco etc world bank you should know all this wto and all so yeah so this is more or less the syllabus uh, you should follow it and thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day
hey guys what's up so in this particular lesson i will be making you a master in indian polity from a novice or a beginner in just a 45 day and this is 100% authentic strategy this is not a gimmick or anything like that presented by me roman seni and if you feel like these courses are helping in any way you can click on the contribute button and it will help us and just give a voluntary fee and it will help us in bringing more and more awesome courses you can also follow me on an academy that is an academy dot in slash user slash roman seni so what should be an approach of an aspirant any aspirant who starts with any exam on this planet earth should always go through what is the syllabus but unfortunately we don't sir and ma'am we never see syllabus that is unfortunate on our part and we fail because of that then once we see the syllabus then the second thing which any aspirant should go through is the previous year question papers this is are the two logical things which everybody on this earth who is giving upsc should go through then third you should decide what books you are going to read which i will be telling you in subsequent moment then the study approach which i'll be completely dealing with you then in next lesson i'll be talking how to make notes and how to revise properly and how to finally use test papers as practice and how to repeat it again and again so first is you have to watch this course in 2 to 2 and a half hours however it takes that is the first thing first without this there is no 45 day strategy and if you cannot do that at least read the slides in the slide mode so you know the importance of last 10 year question papers and approach which i am will telling you never ever overdo never go beyond what is asked in the exam you are not here to do a phd thesis you just have to clear civil services examination okay so if you read science also don't become a doctor do not read from many sources again and again lakshmi kan should be the key book supplement might include yojana and academy lessons the hindu that's all apart from these four things if you are touching fifth thing you are a fool unless you are already done with these four things you should not do anything else nothing more than this is needed to crack the exam frankly speaking you can get a top 20 rank and key is the repetition 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 again again revision and finally retention of the substance and not replication of resources never ever go for multiple books multiple resources then keep on rewatching this course whenever you feel confused this is perfect remedy for 2 and 1/2 hours good books and courses are like friends you need to revisit them throughout the life to revisit to reunderstand just keep on coming back again and again to understand them better my advice in this course will work 100% of the time for 90% of you okay this is important some of you might not like this so it is up to you happy birthday using the strategy you may not become a genius i am not saying you will become a genius you may not even get 100% of the marks you may not be the topper i can totally say that you this can happen but this is my guarantee that it will give you the best cost benefit analysis this will be the best bang for your buck now who would you like to be study polity for 6 months and getting 95% marks or study for 45 days and getting 85 to 90 marks i will always be in the second category because i want to be above average in everything not exceptional in anything see because in this examination you have to be a generalist now schedule day 0 as i have already told you you need to watch this course in 2 and 1/2 hours you can increase the speed later on to 1 and 1/2 to 2x entire course will be covered from end to end on an academy of polity so those of you who cannot afford coaching or those who do not like reading books you can watch all the lessons on an academy and you can watch all the lessons and also use book as a reference material or vice versa and you can refer them specially for a topic which you do not understand or you are unable to comprehend or in case of current affairs because they will never be present in the books cool so what i would if ever you or any of you day 1 to 2 i would download these ncert for free of cost from website then ncert class 6 deals with diversity government local government and administration that is pm pm means panchayat and municipalities and livelihood i would read this in let's say half an hour one hour two hour maximum then class 7th ncert i will just focus on these four chapters out of 10 1 2 3 and 10 this again i will read it in one one and a half hour then class 8th ncert all 10 chapters are important it will take you about 10 hours 12 hours to read this then class 9th ncert again it will take you 10 12 hours and class 10th ncert again it will take you like it will take you less because you have already made a base so approximately 2 days will go entirely in this exercise but this is so so important that still 95% of the aspirant do not read syllabus or they do not read ncert this is the first step for you 
now when it comes to 11th and 12th class ncrt they are totally focused on mains except class 1 ncrt part 1 where all the 10 chapters are nothing but class 6 to class 10th ncrt whatever you have read uska just a bigger form is there which deals with both prelims and mains so you have to read this it will take you about one day complete now these entire things see these things are not important for prelims like political theory secularism peace development nationalism these are hardcore mains topic similarly class 12th and CIT part 1 world politics again it is important for world history perspective in paper 1 as well as for international relations and but questions from international relations will never come from this NCRT, so you can ignore it, especially for prelims. For mains time, you can just go through it fast. Class 12th NCRT deals with India since independence, so this is more important for paper 1. Again, there are better resources available, you don't need to read this. So by and large, this will be done in 2 days. Okay, so now 4 days, you have a very strong science uh, background of, uh, sorry, polit NCRT background. And now from 5 to 45, what you have to do is day 5, you read all the polity previous year question papers. In a, a one year, 15 question comes on an average. So 10 years, it will be 150 question. You memorize the question, you memorize the option, you memorize everything, which color ink was that. You memorize explanation, related concept, everything you can, you memorize everything. Now after 5 days, you have to revise the course again and watch uh, like the NCRT notes, whatever you have made if in case and the previous year question papers. Now in 6 days, that is almost the first week, you have such a strong foundation which people struggle even after 1 year, 2 year, 5 year to develop. Now day 7 and 8, give 2 days for Lakshmikant and skim through all the 800-900 pages. See what is there, the content, see it, feel it, smell it, taste it. Then day 9 to 34, take pen and paper or take your MacBook or laptop or desktop or tablet or whatever capsule and make notes from Lakshmikant. I will be telling you which chapters to deal first and I will be telling you next lesson how to make notes. Then day 35, skim through Lakshmikant again very very fast so that you, you have a quick revision. Day 36 to 40, you have to read all the 12 Yojanas which are available in 5 days. I will be making a lesson on how to read Yojana very very quickly and like for prelims purposes july to july that is july previous year to july the prelims year and for mains also november previous year to november of mains year now last five days you have to revise the notes you have to revise ncrts you have to revise my course you have to revise previous year question papers lakshmi Kant, and yojana if available so if 12 yojana are not available just read 10 depending on what time you are doing this 45 day strategy now lakshmi Kant filtering out unnecessary from important will take forever because People are always confused. People think everything is important in Lakshmikant is wrong. You have to just watch through the courses and previous year question papers and you will realize what is important. First read the entire book in one go as I have already told you. Then always focus on these important topics whenever you are revising again in your life. First is chapter 3, salient feature of constitution, then preamble, then union and territories, fundamental rights, DPSP, FTAs. By and large, 25 to 30% of polity paper come from these six chapters. I am not kidding. I have read last 10 year question papers and know. Then amendment, basic structure of constitution is so important. They always ask in prelims, mains, etc. Emergency provisions are also very favorite. Parliament, especially parliamentary committees is such a favorite topic with UPSC. Every year there is a question. Same goes with Supreme Court. Then special state of Jammu and Kashmir. Panchayati Raj is written in the prelims question syllabus. Scheduled and tribal area election commission, controller, auditor general, Lokpal and Lokayukta, official languages, electoral reforms, anti defection law. Once you are done with all these chapters, then read schedules of Indian constitution. And now there are total 71 chapters in Lakshmi Kant. Whatever is remaining, you can read it. And total 14 appendix also. If you feel like it's helping you, you can go through them. So what are the other sources from which people read, like uh, there are lots of manuals of 1500-3000 pages, I don't think they help, but if you want to you can read them, TMH, Unique, there are so many manuals available there, their own coaching notes wherever they are going, Vajiram, Sriram, like DD Basu, some people say it is helpful for mains, I personally don't feel need of it, but it again depends from person to person, Subhash Kashyap is not needed at all, their graduation notes for example if they are from DU, LSR, Miranda House, all these colleges in those Stephens, there is like some polity and stuff, I hope, I am not sure. Uh, they read their professor notes, they need their optional notes, they read online blogs, videos, and they watch an academy videos, they are good because they have comprehensive coverage, you can watch them. So this is the 45 day strategy, I hope it will really really help you and try to apply it and let me know if it works for you and uh, leave your feedback. Thank you for watching this lesson, have an awesome day, next lesson I will teach you how to make notes. 
hey guys what's up so we continue our introduction to polity and in this lesson i'll be teaching you art of effective notes making this is presented by me roman seni and if you feel these courses are helping in any way you can click on the contribute button you can also follow me on anacademy on anacademy.in slash user slash roman seni so how to make notes for polity this is a common question which people ask see it is impossible to revise this subject without personal notes sir and ma'am because there are too many sources hindu yojana kurukshetra india year book then your personal notes lakshmi kant etc there are too many facts to remember it is almost impossible to do that then you have to write keywords phrases summaries etc that's how you make the notes for any subject and for polity also you have to focus on potential fodder material which you can use in your gs paper in mains examination and important articles of polity that is the constitution of india then you have to focus on current and flagship schemes in details they are as a lot in prelims mains and interview uh their provisions who are their beneficiaries who are their enablers who is the responsibility will lie for implementation then you have to focus on time periods like rajya sabha will take money bill for 14 days maximum then they have to revert what is the type of majority simple majority these are the things which they ask like this process will require what type of majority for example gst will be passed in the by the constitutional amendment bill but state they will 50% or more of the state have to ratify and they will ratify by simple majority these are the things which you need to know exceptions if any and for god sake do not write full statements especially bare articles legal clauses from the bills acts or articles because no one asks them and no one gives a crap if you have if you know them or not and you ask questions and take care of all the contingencies i'll show you how it is done so let's see whenever it comes to government schemes you just remember 10 to 15 are flagship schemes which are important for last one decade for example mg nrgs nrhm and uhm all these things 20 to 25 are important because they were in the news in last one year for one reason or the another okay 20 to 25 are important because they are launched by the current government or the present government whichever it is in the par 10 to 15 are important because they are covered in india year book questions are asked from it 10 to 15 are important because they are covered in economic survey yojana or kurukshetra and there is a decent overlap among all these so there are total 50 to 100 schemes which you need to know in certain details because they are important for prelims mains and interview questions are asked from it no matter what you think so for example statum india so it support entrepreneurship scst females that's how we make notes loans 10 lakh to 1 crore setting up of new enterprise they will get a rupee debit card they will get pre loan training facilitating loans factoring and marketing they will develop credit history of these under bank sections of society it will be refinanced through sidb that is small industry development bank of india with an initial corpus of 10000 rupees crore okay so that's how you make notes very very crisp clear similarly you will need to remember bodies laws acts bills all these things which are in news then example of an important article is money bill so article 109 says all these things but it is impossible to revise because at the day of exam it will look like this this is precisely how it look it will look very weird to you so money bill that's how you revise you can revise this notes which i have made in 20 to 30 seconds article 109 says that no introduction is possible in rajya sabha and lok sabha will introduce it so it will send to rajya sabha now rajya sabha may send back with recommendations without recommendations or nothing at all if it sends within 14 days lok sabha can accept or reject them and it will be passed as per the 100% will of lok sabha that's how notes should be made what lok sabha want will happen absolute zero power of rajya sabha if rajya sabha sends after 14 days it will be deemed pass as sent by lok sabha so what lok sabha want will happen it has absolute zero power of rajya sabha these notes can be revised in 20 seconds just before our prelims examination one hour before the prelims examination while well, these notes can never be now example of an important concept is 12 schedules so for example there are more than 88 pages official document which you cannot remember right it is impossible to revise it you need one week to remember all that and impossible to revise as i have already spoken so just to make a table write all the important uh, tables of all the things you can possibly and revise it in 10 minutes and as you revise again and again it can be revised in one one minute also 30 seconds also for example first is schedule deals with territory of india that is states and union territories second deals with salary and emoluments plus of constitutional offices of president vice president governor comptroller auditor general then speaker deputy speaker chairman deputy chairman both at national and state level and supreme court and high court judges all of them are included here literally everyone so they will ask so they can ask in mcq which of the following is included or which of the following is not included then third deals with oaths in case of theist who believe in god they take oaths affirmation in case of no god or atheist so affirmation with those who do not believe in god 
then it is applicable for union and state ministers high court and supreme court judges comptroller or auditor general candidates also who are fighting for the election for M along with mps mlas and mlcs the candidates also are applicable everything is covered in these notes fourth schedule deals with allocation of seats in rajya sabha 233 are elected 12 are nominated uh, like art science literature and social service 2 by 7 are from ut's and like uh, like obviously delhi and puducherry and up is maximum 31 while puducherry and assam tripura meghalaya mizoram this is arunachal arunachal tripura meghalaya mizoram manipur nagaland and goa has just one then fifth is administration of only, this means that uh, delhi and uh, puducherry is represented similarly fifth deals with administration of scheduled area and scheduled tribe except atm money atm money is autonomous district of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram it has district council and regional council similarly seventh is list one union and list two states these are the important ones which are covered here list three is concurrent eight schedule deals with official language you can see here 14 or original so originally 14 was there by 21st amendment act sindhi was added 71 amendment act manipuri konkani nepali was added 92nd amendment act bodo dogri mathili and santhali was added to 22 okay so that is like total languages 21 plus 71 is 92 and 1 plus 3 is equals to 4 so total languages now are that's how you remember 21st amendment act 71 amendment act and 92nd amendment act 9th schedule was added by first constitutional amendment act 10th schedule was added by 52nd constitutional amendment act 11th is obviously panchayati raj and 12th is municipalities so that is how you can remember you can just read them that first constitutional amendment act jamindari abolition misused if law in this List is after 24th April 1973, that is case on the Bharti case, judicial review can happen according to Justice Koilo's judgment. Then 10th schedule deals with anti-defection, voluntarily if you give a party ticket or if you vote or abstain against party or independent if you join party or nomination if you join party after 6 months. These are the ground for defection. Uh, so example of a time period, write down all the time related things in one place. I am giving you two examples. So for example in money bill the time period is 14 days. So they have to remember Rajya Sabha has 14 days. Similarly, in case of emergencies, it has to be a parliamentary periodic approval of six months is given, but it has to be approved first within one month. So these are the questions they'll ask one month, two months, five months, six months. Now, how to make notes out of this using contingencies and questions. So in national emergency, you will ask what is it, who will proclaim it, what articles, grounds, characteristic effects, past and other general stuff. All these things you need to remember. Now, what if it needs to be further extended? Then answer is periodic parliamentary approval is required six months at a time. What if President X mal of ID? There should be checks and balances, right? So needs to be passed by both the houses within one month. How will they pass it? By special majority. That is two thirds of present and voting plus simple majority of total membership. That is the special majority required here. Then you will ask Rajya Sabha is permanent. What if Lok Sabha is not there even after one month of emergency? Then the calculation will start after Lok Sabha is in session provided Rajya Sabha passes it. Then you can ask, can emergency be invoked in two different parts for two different regions? Answer is yes. Can emergency be invoked for two different regions, the same region? Answer is yes. When will it cease to exist? When will it continue? And so much more you can ask yourself and the answers will come to you. And that's how you make notes. Now, finally, some exceptions which are mentioned in the constitution or not. These are the things which uh, UPSC ask. So they will ask, where is the phrase national emergency used in the constitution? Answer is nowhere. Constitution does talks about proclamation of emergency, which by default we mean national emergency. Where does the phrase no confidence motion is there? Answer is nowhere. It says that Lok Sabha has to prove its strength on the floor, otherwise it will be dissolved. But it never says no confidence motion. Then where is the word union cabinet mentioned? Answer is yes, it is mentioned in the constitution. Under article 352 sub clause 3, president cannot proclaim emergency unless cabinet gives in writing. So these are the like ways, some of the ways where you, which how you can know, make notes, you can devise your own strategy, whatever works for you. But always remember that acts, bodies, government schemes, these are so many things, articles, you have to remember all of them. Otherwise your notes, you will not be able to revise before prelims, mains or interview. So thank you for watching this lesson. Have an awesome day. Hey guys, what's up? So this is one of the most important lesson because I'll be telling you all the important topics which you need to cover. And this will be the first part of important topics represented by me, Roman Seni, and we will be talking about the topics related to the static portion. And if you feel these courses are helping in any way, you can click on the contribute button and leave a voluntary fee. You can also follow me on an academy on anacademy.in slash user slash Roman Seni. So let's uh, get the current affairs out of the way. I cannot predict what they will ask, especially now because the current affairs are yet to happen. Usually they ask questions from schemes, bodies, commission acts, constitutional amendment bills much more okay the current bills like gst etc 
जीरो क्वेश्चन टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इन प्रिलिम्स कम फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर नॉट मोर देन दैट फिफ्टी टू एट्टी परसेंट पेपर इन मेन्स कम फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली फॉर दैट यू जस्ट नीड टू रीड योजना एंड हिंदू डेली योजना मंथली हिंदू डेली नथिंग एल्स यू नीड टू मेक नोट्स आउट ऑफ दैम एंड नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस विल बी कवर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एंड जस्ट बिकॉज आई कैन नॉट मैंशन द टॉपिक्स इट डज नॉट मीन दैट यू शुड नॉट रीड दैम ओके करंट अफेयर हैज टू बी डन अदरवाइज विल नॉट गेट सेलेक्टेड now when we talk about static portion you know no need to read anything except lakshmikant for this i have seen people reading an ios material like no lots of blogs and all that it will not help because one or two questions might be out of lakshmikant but the cost benefit analysis is really bad again 50 to 100% question prelims come from lakshmikant depending on the current affair portion and 20 to 50% mains is covered from lakshmikant now although they will not ask directly in mains but you still need to read it why because 100% of the questions can be from this section prelims i am not kidding in 2013 when i gave the paper it came 2014 also lot of questions came 2012 also you will not understand current affairs without understanding the static portion okay this is absolutely clear right other even if you think that directly will not come and directly they will help you so let's start with the important topics first so the most important topics are indian council act starting from regulating act of 1773 1784 pets india act then 1813 1833 1853 1858 1859 1860 1870 1871 1872 1873 1874 1875 1876 1877 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878 1878
like especially you need to remember which type it is socialistic gandhian or liberal intellectual they will ask this question 100 percent features is also there then what is the use if not legally enforceable this is common question which is asked in dpsp as well as fundamental duties then you need to criticize it first a bit and then you need to uh, signify the significance or importance then again compare and contrasting with dp uh, fundamental rights sorry supreme court judgments is there and what are the acts which are there for implementation of fundamental duties as well as dpsps so these things you need to remember now fundamental duties you need to remember word by word everything every year in prelims means one question is asked hundred percent and you need to remember the order as well of the entire list and just like dpsp uh, like uh, the question will be what is the use if it is not legally enforceable so you need to criticize it and then imp and signify the importance etc then Keshwan and the Bharti case you need to remember the doctrine of basic structure of Indian constitution it is so important what does basic structure means everything and in, in the basic structure a person should know like this is such a critical point i can't even tell you i cannot emphasize more like this is directly asked in the exam which of the following is a basic feature like federation constitution of india all these things are basic feature then power of judicial review again it is a, again very very important then constitutional amendment act total process type of majority simple majority all these type of majorities you need to remember which type for example changing the state then it is done by simple majority all these things then parliament key features especially uh, parliamentary form versus presidential form important articles like money bill etc parliamentary committees very 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 important now weird funny sounding words in the process like guillotine well budget and all that financial bill discussion discussion going on zero hour etc what is the importance question r all these things then good and bad about parliamentary form of government which are the good things which are the bad things why presidential form is good or bad or whatever why india is a parliamentary democracy and quasi federal structure of india differentiate between the britain also the parliamentary system then compare and contrast with truly federal countries like usa versus truly unitary government like britain and which of the features are federal which of the features are unitary 10 are federal roughly 10 are unitary then President is very very important questions are asked like election of the president power of the president like executive legislative financial judicial diplomatic military etc then functions of the president qualification of the president oath of the president terms of the president impeachment of the president if president dies who will become president vice president etc then types of vetoes pocket veto absolute veto historical usage whether it has been used in India for example Gani Jail Singh used the veto in Rajiv Gandhi government for a post office uh, Abdul Kalam also signed for reconsideration. Ordinance, how does president signs ordinance, who make ordinance, what is the legality of ordinance, till when it is valid, pardoning power of the, like there are three types of things, right, do you remember, I will tell you in detail later, and constitutional authority and position of the president. So these are the things which you need to remember, and next lesson we will discuss further the remaining important topics. Thank you for watching this lesson, have an awesome day. Hey guys, what's up? So we continue the discussion of our important topics in polity and this is part 1.4.2. This is presented by me, Roman Sani. So let's get started and if you feel these courses are helping in any way, you can click on the contribute button. It will help us in bringing more and more awesome courses and you can follow me on Unacademy on unacademy.in slash user slash Roman Sani. So important topics when it comes to center state relationship like what kind of relationship you are discussing financial relationship, administrative relationship, legislative relationship, finance commission like how does it uh, distribute the revenues among the states and among the different states. Then interstate relationship large by and large the question will be asked from water dispute like Kaveri and all that. So what how does the dispute resolution happens what are the tribunals what is their role etc. Then interlinkages of rivers, etc. That is also interstate relationship, very important components. Then what are interstate councils, zonal councils, chief minister their head, which all participate and all that. So you need to remember these things in details. Then emergency, that is national emergency, which is also called as proclamation of emergency. State emergency, which is president's rule and financial emergency. When it can it be declared? What are the grounds on which it can be declared? Changes with the different constitutional amendment act what is the role of parliament lok sabha rajya sabha what are the changes which are seen during emergency financial changes etc article 358 versus 359 national emergency versus president's rule judicial review and use and abuse of emergencies in modern india like there are 
uh, like lots of instances 50 to 100 instances of precedence rule being applied on various states 5 5 10 10 times since independence on any state so what is this everything related to that you need to understand a lot of questions are asked then vice president what is his qualification how does the election of vice president happens what are the oath he takes what are the terms of his office what are the like, conditions of his office what are his powers and roles and functions and all that uh, when does he become a president does he take the salary as president takes all these are important things which should come automatically in your head then again with prime minister his appointment his oaths powers roles relationship relations with president etc so that becomes important now when it comes to union council of ministers or in ma'am you have to deal with article 74 and 75 or oh, what is the collective responsibility of cabinet uh, council of minister to the lok sabha what is the composition of council of minister uh, cabinet is basically a more specialized form of council of minister council of minister include all the ministers while cabinet includes only those ministers who have cabinet rank like finance ministry defense ministry etc now what is coterie cabinet or kitchen cabinet that is an internal uh, like um, team among the team and like the 10 cabinet committees you need to know about them what are their roles features what is group of ministers what is empowered group of ministers all that you need to know now parliament what is the composition of parliament composition of lok sabha and rajya sabha how are the elections taking place qualifications oaths and affirmations etc of the mps all that now speaker and deputy speaker of lok sabha how does the independence of speaker is ensured uh, who is the deputy speaker of lok sabha who is it appointed upon what is the conventions what are their roles and powers then chairman and deputy chairman of rajya sabha etc then leader of house and opposition like who is the leader of house who is the leader of opposition uh, one tenth and all that you need to know quorum system etc then the different terminologies associated with parliamentary sessions adjournment prorogation this time in 2016 a prelims question was asked like what is dissolution what is lame duck session when election happens the sitting lok sabha if that does not win the election then it is a lame duck what is quorum at least one tenth of the members should be present for it to be effective then what is zero hour what are the motions different motions different resolutions what is the point of order etc all that need to be covered then what is the process of making laws that is a law making process what is a public bill what is a private bill what is an ordinary bill what is a money bill financial bill constitutional amendment acts etc then the total number of readings which goes on first reading second reading third reading etc when does the joint sitting happens does it happen with constitutional amendment act answer is no who has the upper hand in joint sitting obviously lok sabha has the upper hand because lok sabha has more than twice the number of members as rajya sabha lok sabha has 550 3 and rajya sabha is roughly 245 then budget what are the total stages of budget first stage second stage how does it pass what is the role of different ministries and departments in budget then different parliamentary functions legislative executive judiciary financial functions and much much more then rajya sabha's status as compared to lok sabha whether it is above Raj lok sabha in certain cases whether it is equal to lok sabha special powers of rajya sabha when it is inferior or unequal to lok sabha all this you need to know then parliamentary privileges like you need to know individual privileges and like collective privileges how does parliament ensure sovereignty then parliamentary committee is a very 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 important topic so it includes public account committee department standing committees committees on public undertakings estimates and ad hoc committees etc then supreme court like how does the appointment of judges happens chief justice of india qualifications oath of the chief justice tenure removal etc then independence of supreme court then what are the jurisdiction of supreme court original jurisdiction writ jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction advisory jurisdiction why it is called a court of record because anything that happens here can be quoted and unquoted it can be taken as a precedence when a judge of a lower or the similar court is announcing then what is judicial review or how does that happen all that then governor his election qualification terms and conditions powers and roles that is executive legislative judiciary and financial then power of governor versus president veto power pardoning power ordinance making power etc then same thing with chief minister is election qualification and terms and condition you need to know what is his office how what is the minimum age to become chief minister what is the powers of chief minister what are functions roles what is the relationship with the governor you need to be very very proactive to know these things then state council of ministers article 3163 to 167 then cabinet committees at this level then state legislature its organization composition where legislative council is present it is present in six states 
now telangana has been created so has the legislative council transferred there as well then what is the membership it cannot be like one it cannot be one third you need to know these things exception is there in jammu and kashmir where it is even less than one third so membership speaker deputy speaker chairman of council deputy chairman all this you need to know what are their roles who are how are they appointed and all now sessions process of making a law same here just like parliament money bills position of legislative council versus legislative assembly privileges of mlas and mlcs collective privileges and individual privileges then strength of various state legislative assembly for example in up it is roughly 400 in rajasthan it is roughly 200 so you need to know this rough figure so that they might ask you any day uh, high courts like judges just like supreme court appointments qualification oaths tenure removal salaries allowances transfer how does it happen how does the chief justice is picked up now how does the independence of high court is ensured there are 9 to 10 points which you need to remember then there is jurisdiction that is original writ appellate supervisory judicial review total number of high courts new entry of high courts is there in the northeastern region you need to remember them then subordinate courts what is their hierarchy from oneself till above and constitutional provisions then special status of Jammu and Kashmir, accession deed, article 370, current relationship, what are the chief characteristics of Jammu and Kashmir, constitution, dual citizenship, then like uh, J&K autonomy was rejected, resolution to that, then in 2010 a group of interlocutors were appointed, what were their recommendation, then every state because of tribal population or something like that, some specific region, there are some special provisions made after Jammu and Kashmir, so article 370 and beyond you will find them. Maharashtra, Gujarat, Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, Andhra Pradesh, Sikkim, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, Goa and Karnataka. And governor of that state has a lot of powers with respect to ensuring that these are done, these special provisions. Then like important bodies like National Development Council, Niti Aayog, Human Rights Commission, Information Commission, Vigilance Commission, CBI's, Lokpal's, Lokayukta, what is their mandate, what is their role, who is their chief, how they are appointed, how do they function, how is their independence ensured, all that you need to remember. Then finally, it is very important to remember the name of the Presidents of India till Independence, Prime Ministers of India, Vice Presidents of Independent India and some miscellaneous topics are there which you need to figure out. This is important because sometimes directly or indirectly in essay if you mention them, it makes you sound wiser and you can also solve certain MCQs. So thank you for watching this lesson, we will continue our course. Hey guys, what's up? So this is the third lesson and introduction to polity where we are discussing important topics and we have done with strategy and all these things. So please watch the lessons before this, before you move on. This is presented by me, Roman Sani and if you feel these courses are helping in any way, you can click on the contribute button and leave a voluntary fee. You can also follow me on an academy on an academy.in slash user slash Roman Sani. Okay, so let's get started. Now important topics, this is the page 22, so please watch the first 21 pages before you move on. Panchayati Raj is very very important because it is one of the landmark thing which is associated with us for last 2000 years. Mahatma Gandhi ji also emphasized a lot on Panchayati Raj. Origin from Rajasthan because Rajasthan was the first state like right after independence. Then Balwant Raya Mehta, Ashok Mehta, Rao committees, then Sangvi committee. All these things are important because you need to know the groundwork for Panchayati Raj. Every year one question is guaranteed almost in prelims either mains or interview. 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992 features include Gram Sabha, three tire system, election, reservation of schedule caste, schedule tribe and women, power and roles, 29 items in 11th schedule. You need to remember these 29 items. At least vaguely you should remember because then MCQ they might ask this is not under Panchayat or this is under Panchayat, something like that. You need to remember that list. Then PESA Act, Panchayat extension to scheduled areas 1996, very very important. Questions are asked on this directly in prelims and mains, objectives and features. Then what are compulsory and voluntary provisions in Panchayati Raj. So all these things you need to be well versed with. Now when it comes to municipalities, again you need to remember the origin, different types of urban bodies, uh, urban governments are there, you need to remember them. Then it is also introduced through a constitutional amendment act which is 74th constitutional amendment act. So it introduced part 9a. Currently we also have part 9b uh, after 97th constitutional amendment act I think which is like related to cooperative societies. Then what are the features, what are the three types of municipalities, what are their powers and roles and what are the total 18 items in the 12th schedule. Okay, 
then union territories why were they created in the first place like why they are different from states so there are various reasons like political and administrative region cultural region strategic importance so for example in case of andaman it is because of strategic importance for puducherry it is cultural region okay so you need to remember these things then why what is different between a state and a union territory everybody needs to know that otherwise there is no point in creating a union territory if it is not at all different from states right so you need to know where this major difference lies then who is the administrator of union territory what is the hierarchy of administration because there is no like in certain cases there is no governor right so the senior is officer they become the administrator and they take charges so you need to know these things then the special status of delhi you need to remember why this special status has been given because it is our capital or because of some other reasons so you need to know these things then comptroller and auditor general especially like constitutional articles which are given on comptroller and auditor general what are the terms and conditions of his office like where does his salary is charged oath is declared all these thing you need to know most importantly how do you ensure that his office remains independent neutral and impartial then what did like vinod rai who was an is officer he did an exemplary work while he was appointed as comptroller and auditor general and he exposed lot of scams in the upa2 government so you need to remember these things then power powers of comptroller and auditor general can he do it for private sector also can he audit the thing public private partnership all these things you need to know in detail then attorney general of india sorry remove this here from here like what are the constitutional articles dealing with attorney general of india is he allowed to sit in lok sabha can he participate in lok sabha proceedings can he vote all these things then what are the terms and conditions of his offices then again what is the solicitor general of india if we have an attorney general of india why do we need a solicitor general of india now what are the powers of attorney general of india all these things you need to know in absolute details what are the previous attorney general of india what is the conflict between like if can they handle like private sector uh, like if client approaches them can they fight on his behalf can they fight in a case where government of india is a party for or against the think motion so you need to remember all these things you need to ask these intuitive questions to yourself then scheduled and tribal area what are the features of scheduled and tribal area what is the part schedule 5 what is schedule 6 of constitution of india then how does the administration of tribal area takes place amtm you know like uh, that is under a part uh, part 6 uh, schedule 6 while the rest of them fall in schedule 5 what is the difference pesa district autonomous council all these things you need to remember now various constitutional bodies like election commission so for election commission earlier there used to be just single member body but then there was chief election commissioner and there were other election commissioners why this was introduced why did they change the composition who is tn session how did he do an exemplary work while he was part of election commission constitutional articles composition independence powers functions all these things one need to know in detail okay if you have to clear this exam otherwise if you just have superficial knowledge you will not be able to on the other hand don't go too deep also like who was the first election commissioner who is the second election commissioner who is the fourth fifth sixth nobody is going to ask you ever in your life and then what is upsc and spsc union public and state public service commission what is their composition their removal their relative independence functions and roles you need to remember that are they constitutional bodies yes because i have mentioned here they are constitutional bodies then finance commission how was it different from erstwhile planning commission which is no longer existing what is the composition what is role functions what is the 14th finance commission all these things you need to remember right like 15th finance commission it will be valid after 2020 but it will be appointed before that now national commission for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe was a single body earlier why did they separate it later on is the separated body still a constitutional body answer is yes so what is their mandate what is their power when did the separation happens what are the functions how do they protect is it necessary to have scheduled caste members or some other people can also be member of this all these things you need to know now what is the 97 constitutional amendment act cooperative societies it uh, like making a corporate cooperative society is now fundamental right it also changed dpsp and it is also changing it has introduced a part 9b in indian constitution now what is the reasons behind the like giving so much importance to cooperative society then official languages what is the controversy between hindi english and other regional languages then what is the language of judiciary how do we protect linguistic minorities differences between all india and central services like there are only two all india services at the time of independence which is indian administrative services and indian police services from 1950s onwards but in mid 1960s they added indian forest service also 
so there are only three all india services at this point of speaking ias I, ips and indian forest service indian foreign service is the central service it is not a all india service all india service means that you are appointed by a government of india but you are working with state governments and cadres now what is the constitutional provisions which is required for appointment their like salary process durations conditions what is article 311 which is act as a protective articles what is central administrative tribunals and other state tribunals then multi party political system in india what what is a national party what is a state party who recognizes it then elections article 324 to 329 the constitutional provisions part 15 then election officials like chief electoral officer district electoral officer returning officer all these things you need to remember what is their role this is asked a lot then the process of the election also it is very important like for different dignitary it will be different obviously what is the role of electronic voting machine then electoral reforms various committees like there are a lot of reforms like decriminalization like rigging of polls how to ensure that does not happen electronic voting machine banning exit polls giving holidays to employees so that they can go out and vote schedule 10 deals with anti defection law now anti defection law like who is a defector can an independent who joins another party become a defector can a nominee be a defector all these things then the national commission to review the working of the constitution it is also very important what is the basics of indian india's foreign policy but it, it has to be more current basis because they will ask only current things from this then three list that is union state and concurrent list warrant of precedence who comes before all that prime minister comes or president comes oath of different constitutional and non constitutional authorities important constitutional amendment acts like 21 71 92 all these things model code of conduct why election commission does not want to be it to be legally enforced so finally summary is like cover the current affairs from hindu and yojana this is the first and most important thing secondly read the constitution as if your life depends on it this is the second important thing am lakshmikant indian polity this is the best book by a distance this is the third most important thing and fourth thing is make personal notes especially for troubling areas which you know you'll not be able to revise at the end moment so thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day